it's me, Smokey. I'm going to tell you one of my favorite Christmas stories. It's a real classic. I just heard it yesterday from my friend Pepper. And it's a story about Pepper's human Alistair. And how they were so rich and they lived in this big city, in this big mansion. And the kid, the kid didn't even know that they lived in a mansion. He was so sheltered. And all Pepper's human knows is his aunt and the servants and what he sees from the windows of the limousine on the rare occasion that he gets to leave the house. And Pepper's human Alistair was around eight years old and he lived with his aunt because his parents had crossed that rainbow bridge. So he's a rescue human. And his aunt adopted him, and she was very strict, and she had so many rules. And I feel like, I feel like she wasn't a big uh, laugher. You know, she wasn't like a jokester. She wasn't like, you know, knock, knock. She was, I, you know what I mean? Okay, okay, so it's Christmas Eve, and she's, she's going to bring out the box. And the box is a big deal. And it's like a ceremony. And it's the one thing the aunt does herself. And the servants aren't even allowed to touch the box. And I'm like, wait, I've seen the bark box. I think it's great, but I for sure let my servants touch it. But Pepper was like, no, it's not a bark box. It's better. And I was like, what? And he was like, I know. So, okay, the ant gets all of these glass ornaments out of the box and climbs up on this ladder and starts hanging these little glass ornaments on a tree. And they're so old. And these ornaments have been passed down and passed down and passed down. And who knows how even old they are. And with every ornament that she hangs to that tree, it's like this ice queen is melting little by little right in front of their eyes. And when she's finally done, she exhales and she stands back and she says, now it's Christmas. And it's the one moment every year that Pepper's human Alistair lives for. Now, one of Alistair and Pepper's favorite things to do is to crawl under the Christmas tree. And he does it every year, and they fit under it perfect. So they're fitting under it perfect. And they're under the tree, and something's not right. And, and Alistair's all dizzy and woozy. And he knows he's not supposed to be under the tree, so he gets up. And he loses his balance because of the dizzy and woozy thing. And he knocks into this giant beloved, now it's Christmas, Christmas tree. And the tree falls down. And every ornament is smashed. So the ant comes, comes running in and yelling that the kid ruined Christmas. And here it is Christmas Eve and the kid feels like crap. And he goes to his room. And he gets in bed, and Pepper curls up at his feet. But the ant isn't heartless. And so she goes up to check on him, and he's burning up with a fever. And she's awful, and freaks her freak for a minute, running around. But then, then, she remembers that she's loaded. So she calls in a medical team, and the kid is sleeping. And talking in his sleep. And, and Pepper says that the kid is yelling stuff like, How he ruined Christmas. So then it's 5 a.m. And the kid wakes up. And he wants his Christmas. And he's still kind of, kind of feverish. And he walks into the living room. And instead of seeing the tree, he sees all this medical equipment. So Alistair and Pepper run outside, and there by the street is this Christmas tree, and all the ornaments. And then they go further outside, which 
Dean never do. He never goes outside. And and he's like, what? What? And there's all of these Christmas trees strewn all along the street like garbage. And he, he thinks it's his fault because he ruined Christmas. So he's running all over town and he turns into this one alley and he sees this old guy. And this old guy has this long white beard. And he's passed out on a curb. Okay. Okay, so I'll tell you. The thing is, it's actually December 29th. And the kid has been sick and sedated for four days. But he thinks it's Christmas morning. And that he's found Santa Claus. And he thinks it's his fault that Santa Claus has passed out on the curb. And it, like, he's put him there. And Pepper says the kid starts running around. And, like finding blankets for the old man and, and pleading with him to wake up and go home to the North Pole. And he wrote this note and he pinned it to his sweater and it says, the world needs you, Santa Claus. And then he starts looking real green and he just falls over. So then the old man kind of wakes up, you know, and he sees Pepper standing watch by the kid. Pepper is such a good boy. And the old man sees the note tied to a sweater. And he kind of starts to remember the stuff that the kid was yelling at him. And the old guy finally realized that Pepper's collar has an address on it. See guys, those things work. Put collars on us and put addresses on them and phone numbers. Okay, so, so, not Santa Claus picks up the kid and he takes him home. So... So then Pepper tells me that later, after a few days, the kid's not okay. And he's in a state of delirium. And he's yelling about shenanigans. And he goes going on and on about how he ruined Christmas. So Pepper decides he's going to go get old man Santa Claus. And he's going to bring him back. And the old man is inspired. And he's moved by Pepper. That's such a good boy. And, and he goes back to the mansion. And he tells the aunt that she has to bring Christmas back or Alistair won't make it. She listens to him and she starts barking orders around. And the stir servants start fetching everything for her. As soon as you know it, Christmas is back. And the aunt 